And we're live. All right, everyone. So welcome back to episode three of Real As It Gets podcast. And today I have one of the guests that I've been anticipating for a while. And his name is Richard Figueroa II. Say what's up, bro. What's up? Um, glad to be on here. Um, you're a great friend and ready to get this going. Yeah, bro. Thank you. I uh, appreciate you coming on. So right off the bat, um, man, you, you're, you're Richard, you're Richie, you're Rich, you're, you're Stunning Man. Uh, which one do you prefer the most? Um, Richard, honestly. I mean, yeah. Richie, just for like the people that like, that just like think, oh, it's shorter. Yeah, that people call me or other people call me just Richie, Rich or whatever. But the real friends and all of them call me Richard and all that or whatever. And then Stunning Man is your, is your nickname that you go by. So I watched a, um, a video of one of your buddies uh, from Chase Saldati and through Satellite mm -hmm. Talking. So I heard about it. So you want to kind of tell the people how, how that yeah. came about? Uh, so um, going into like my eighth grade year, not eighth grade year, my freshman year, um, there's a couple of tough tournaments like that colleges go to. So um, yeah. called Super 32 and then the War Challenge. And like I was fresh, a freshman, you know, like that's just yeah. state champ stuff. And I just started beating them one by one. And my friend Tyler was like, hey, you're stunning everyone. So I was like, all right, I was going to click it together, stun them, man. And it's been sticking along. And I've been keeping that name legendary, hopefully. So yeah. it's been good. And and I think it's kind of ironic now because you're, you're not really the – you don't have to stun anybody because the target is on your back now. You're the number one. Yeah. And now everyone's coming back for you. So, I mean, so people are trying to stun you in that sense, but that's a really good backstory um, to kind of just have that yeah. chip on your shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. So um, have you always, you were, were you born in the Valley? No, I was born in Camp Pellington base. My dad was um, stationed there. So in okay. San Diego. So yeah. then we moved back to um, with Fowler. I went to school there in elementary. Yeah. And uh, then like, what's it called? Do middle school. And then once middle school was done, I went to Salma. Okay, but you were always kind of training with someone, right? Yeah, always since, yeah, that's where I started and been there since when I was seven and now I'm still with them still. So it's been an honor to still show Salma support and everything. Yeah, it's because, um, man, I was I was quite a stud uh, back in the day at wrestling. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All jokes aside, but yeah, I, 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 I'm a basketball player. So basketball wrestling yeah. kind of interlap and I had the when I was younger it was just fourth grade I want to say about 2009 mm -hmm. 20, um that was like a season about a whole year I got to wrestle with uh team Selma wrestling and I got to kind of just like learn about the the, the history in Selma about wrestling and, and how serious they take it right like it's not just like any other sport in Selma wrestling is like like year after year probably the only sport that consistently performs at the highest level and um, man, bro, like the practices were intense to, to the tournaments, <laughs> the parents, uh, and just like the, the guys themselves, you know, they're, they're clowns, bro. You know, we grew up with them. So I just thought that, was <laughs> yeah. that I like got to experience that as- I feel like the funny thing is like, I feel like everyone from Salma has at least wrestled one time. Yeah, if for sure. Ask, ask one, hey, have you wrestled? Yeah, like like when I was young, yeah, like- Yeah. Be asking random people, have you wrestled before? Like, yeah, when I was young. So I feel like everyone from Salma has wrestled at least one time or tried it out. At least. at least tried it out. Yeah, that's that's like the cool thing about Salma. And I remember my I wasn't the best, bro. I was just I was just out there yeah. trying it out. And and it really kind of sh like showed me how hard the sport is. And you know, everyone kind of makes fun of like wrestling, and it's kind of like, yeah. oh, it's easy. I can do that. And then you go on your mat, and you go on the mat and get your ass kicked, and you're like, yeah, like. I don't, I don't want to go back there, you know? And then, and then it's yeah. like, we were kind of talking about earlier, like it's, it's two hour, three hour practice is hard. Yeah. Um, like minimal water is hot, you yeah. know, hot in there. And it's like, it's, as a young person, it just kind of breaks you and you need to be mentally strong um, to be yeah. a wrestler. But we'll, we'll kind of get back to that, having that mentality later. But um, I want, kind of want to ask you uh, how long you've been wrestling yeah, I lost count. So seven, I'm 18 right now. So like at least over 10 years, at least over 10 years. It's, it's been a long time. And you, started, I kinda you, lost said you, you were, you were seven years old. That was yeah. like late 2000s. Uh, no, like 2000, like six, 2007. No, 2008. Cause my 2009, that was my second year wrestling. That's when I won my first national uh, tournament. That my is second year. 
that's insane. I'll, I'll get back to that right now. But um, what, why did you start? You just is, is it kind of like how we're talking about? It's just a Selma thing, and you want to try it out, or somebody that you knew that just kind of introduced you to wrestling? Um, like at first, um, I was playing all kinds of sport: baseball, soccer. All right. Um, then um, I started doing MMA in Fresno or whatever, and there's some like Salma people there, or just knew about Salma, and it was one of my mom's good friends, and she seemed like, oh, like I'm good and stuff, like taking yeah. people down or just I just have that little fight in me. Yeah. And she said, hey, you should try him out into um, the Salma beginnings uh, beginners program. Yeah. And my mom did. Um, it was kind of like I was like, what am I doing? You know, like. Yeah. I don't like this. I don't like people pulling up on me. But then I started to like understand it. And then my mom liked it because like it pushed me. Like I was crying. Like honestly, I, I cried every day. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, cause those guys, like some of people are no joke. Like kids would throw hands. And like, I was like, damn, I don't like this. Like, you know, like I was crying every day. Like, yeah. Even like when I got to, when they moved, like when they move you up, like I was still crying at those practices. I was like, damn. But at the point, like, you get tired of crying. You're like, I'm tired of these guys beating up on me. So that's – then I just started kicking it up and starting getting better. That's crazy. You know, that, I, I feel you on that because I've seen that firsthand. Um, just, you know, the, it's crazy that a, a practice and at that age can, can just push you that much mentally and kind of just drain you. And then you have that choice to make, right? Like, it, I'm done. Like, and you walk away kind of like how I did. And, yeah. and Or you just kind of suck it up and you're like, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be the one that's going to be dishing it out now. Like, I'm tired yeah. of getting whooped on. At some point, you're going to be tired of crying, like, and you get tired when you, after you're done crying, you know, like, after those, like, freaking, you get in trouble, you start crying, you take a nap. That's <laughs> how it was. So, what's it called? I was just like, damn, like, this is, like, worthless. I look like a little punk out here. So, yeah. I was just, like, I'm just going to get straight to it. Yeah, no, that's dope. And then, so, just, like, a few moments ago, you said that in your second year, you ended up winning what tournament you said? Which one? Um, you said uh, in your second year. So you said in your second year, you ended up winning uh, Reno. I won. Um, I won. Uh, yeah, I ended up winning Reno. That's like I guess like it was pretty big, a big um, wrestling one. That's the national tournament at the young age, right? Yeah. yeah, national tournament. Everyone goes there and stuff. So like have everyone from out of the country like from the like, let's go um you could do this and oh shit we good you could do this and stuff and um and I was working hard that year and like mostly every year I always work hard but like I was working hard and I won I ended up beating a kid like five two hit a Granby yeah I was losing I was losing in second period two zero and I just like we got into a little um scramble a stalemate and then right off the wrist I hit a Granby for five points and third period I wrote him out and that was it. Man, I'll, that's kind of wild to me, bro, because it, it seemed like that wrestling just kind of came to you um, naturally or, or rather quickly because um, it takes a while to kind of build up the skills in, in any sport to, oh, yeah. to end up becoming a, a champion, especially at that level. But you kind of did it almost immediately in your, in your second year. Um, do you kind of – is it like a combination of both a little bit of, of, of skill and then also having just kind of that just that swag and confidence to kind of just to learn everything on the fly and just kind of pick it up right away well like for me like I always like would re re um, remember things that my coaches taught me for some reason like it just like once I saw something like them do it I was like okay I know how to do it and by the time like I was really learning how to do like five, five years of wrestlers like doing the moves like Granby, like no, like second year kids should be um, do Granby or like hitting it on a like a guy that's advanced, you know. So, um, but practice it a lot of times, um, you get better at it. Man, yeah, no, that I, I feel you on that because I I remember being in that in that room and they, them going over the moves, and it would take me a really long time to kind of just like first get the technique down and then then to actually see it, yeah. and then you you kind of have to visualize it. And then you see the and, and kind of pick the right moment to hit the right move. Yeah. And then once I feel like you, you like how you say you kind of just figured out when to use it in the correct moments, and that kind of just makes you stick out over your opponents. Um. Yeah, that's a yeah. tough thing to do at a young age, but uh, it seems like you kind of just mastered it and 
and yeah. took it to your advantage right away, which is really good. And then um, you said that Reno is one of the bigger tournaments when uh, you're younger. It, it, do most of the tournaments, it, it varies by state, right? So like in California, I know um, like Reno is the angle, right? It's the nationals. Yeah. Well, there's two before that. So like people would try to go for like Trinity Award, which I did like my third year. Yeah, my third or fourth year, I won the, tri the triple crown. Like and Tulsa back, like Tulsa is still the hardest. So, so it's hardest. Tulsa, uh, uh, Reno, and then there's one more. Well, it's it's Tulsa to say it's called kickoff, the Nationals, then Reno. So the two of the tournaments are in the same place. Oh, okay. So and, and and you yeah. triple crowned it your third year. Yeah, I did. I did triple crown in my third year. And and that was kind of like your first, um, say like taste of like winning big tournaments. So what did that feel like? I mean, like, cause my first, cause my mom threw me like in that tournament, my first year at Tulsa, I think it was Tulsa Nationals. Yeah. My first year, I was like, what the heck am I doing here? Like, I didn't even know what state I was like. I was little, I didn't even know like, <laughs> like where I was going and stuff. So um, end up taking fourth, I lost my third place match. I got caught, I was winning 11 to zero and I got head and arm and got pinned. I was like, no. Yeah, so um, after that, um, then my third year, I was like, okay, now I know how it is, you know, like, yeah. and it just, I just started clicking and stuff, and then I started beating guys that were ahead of me, and then, like, I won that kickoff, then in January, um, this Nationals, to try to go for the Triple Crown, so I went, end up winning that. It was, like, a close match, like, two to zero in the finals, yeah. and then Reno, I in Reno, I just killed a kid like six to zero or something like that. Man, that, that was it. that's kind of hard to just um, just to think about because like I was saying earlier, like you were already competing at the highest level, um, a few years of experience and kind of just already winning these big tournaments. And that's really hard to do. And it, it seems like you're just a natural boat. Like you're just a winner. Um, yeah. And it's, that's really hard to do. And there's, it's like rare for people to do that, which I think is very exciting that um, mm -hmm. a guy like you from, from Salma is putting on. And um, it, it's, it's crazy, bro. Like um, just kind of prepping for this uh, podcast. I was just watching a little bit of uh, videos of yours and um, <laughs> as many free videos, that at least I could watch on YouTube, yeah. you know, uh, you need to have an account for some of these websites, but man, like you're just slick, you're smooth, you're, you're charismatic. Like it's, it's just dope to watch. And, and, and the crazy part is you still have another year, um, your senior year, and then you're going to go on um, to wrestle at the collegiate level, which is, which is dope. Um, kind of want to ask you, um, cause when I was doing my research, I was kind of lost between, I mean, I, I did a little bit of research, but there's, there's a lot of different styles of wrestling. There's folk style, there's freestyle, there's Greco, um, what, what are like the differences between that for someone that you know not into wrestling? Um, how can you explain that the best way? Um, folks, that was like um, there's top and bottom, and like you could um, like there's three periods for folk style. The right. freestyle is only two, but it's all feet, and then freestyle you only get like ten to fifteen seconds. Okay. If you take the guy down, then you get back up to your feet. Then Greco is. Um, all upper body, you can't lose um, legs, you can't touch the legs or nothing, it's all throws and everything, so you have to have a big body, and to be yeah. able to have, like, it's, Greco's hard, I can't even do it, like, good, but I understand it, like, yeah. just don't touch the leg. Okay, so, um, so, high school level is, is freestyle or folk style? Uh, it's folk style, it's folk style. And so, but I do, level? I do, yeah, but I do wrestle freestyle after the folk style season, which okay. is, like, they're, it's split into seasons and different tournaments that you go to? Yeah. So that would be like after like our season of state, I'll go right into freestyle and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was kind of something that um, it's been a while since I've kind of really been around wrestling. So I just kind of, <laughs> I kind of like, you know, it's there, it's a lot for me because I was yeah. like, just an outsider looking in. Like, I don't know some of these rules. And I, <laughs> even when I Googled yeah. it, I was like not getting the best answers, but I was kind of getting an idea of it. And then another mm -hmm. thing I kind of wanted to just ask you is um, just like the rules wise. So there, there's different rules every, every tournament. So do you have to kind of like um, once one season ends, are you kind of just in a whole different mindset? And then our practice is a little different for each style too. 
So, uh, like, when I do folk style, um, like, it's kind of hard because I come from folks, well, because I go freestyle and folk style and folk style to freestyle. So, when I start getting back into folk style, um, you can't walk hands. That's the thing. Yeah. You can't walk hands in folk style, um, folk style. So, like, sometimes I'd be, like, taking guys down and locking hands to try to go for a gut. So, I'm like, oh, damn, I forgot. Yeah. I can't do that. And you get so then, uh, and you get um, penalized for that. Yeah, you get penalized one point. You get one point, but if you get three, then you get disqualified and stuff. Okay. But freestyle, you free, freestyle, you can lock hands. Um, if you throw someone, um, it's four points or a tech fall, which is a quick pin because both his shoulders touched. And yeah, and folks, now um, if you throw someone, you usually don't get points unless you put them on his back. You know, like you get three counts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now that. That see like you explained it pretty well to me and I kind of understand the main concept of it and the more like the like matches and stuff I was watching I was able to kind of pick up on it pretty fast. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, I mean it seems like that you need to be pretty prepared mentally to go into a match like you said that um, sometimes you know one point can be the difference maker. And it's crazy because like freestyle you can score off something like dumb like if you just trip someone to their back that's four points. <laughs> that's wild. Like so like. I usually come like when I do freestyle. I come to LA, which it, which where I, where I'm at right now, and train with one of my coaches. That's very top level freestyle coach. So that's where I always got good at freestyle. Yeah. Um. So you're wrestling up. You said middle school right right here um down the street in Fowler, and or you're already wrestling with the Salmo Wrestling Club. So. What what were the the tournaments like? Like you said, you know, your first few years, you're, you you hit the triple crown, and then you went into middle school. What was that um, competition level like? You said you you obviously wrestled some local tournaments, and then you go on to the national scope and, and kind of wrestle these bigger tournaments. And and once you you get out to these um, this national scene, you you know you start seeing the mm -hmm. competitive level and the competition that it's not all really easy, right? Like these guys yeah. are gonna push you to the max. So so yeah. what was it like when you first? kind of got out on the scene and started seeing the competition nationally? Um, at first, like, I was nervous. I was like, damn. But then, like, honestly, it just prepared me for, like, big events. Like, to now when I'm wrestling in the finals, like, I'm already used to that crowd of wrestling different people. So it's just, like, national tournaments, there's just more people, more kids and stuff. So, and then in the finals, like, everyone's just watching you and you got to perform at your best and stuff. So I think – that prepared me a lot, honestly, for like high school and the bigger tournaments I won after that in high, um, after like wrestling the state and stuff. So, I mean, it's all just a mental game. You just gotta be in a zone. You can't let like distractions. So like when I wrestle and stuff, like I just zone out. Like I usually black out, honestly. Like I don't remember what I do. I'm like, I hit that really? Like going back through my matches and stuff. So it's kind of like weird. Yeah, no, it's like a, it's a state of like just Zen, right? Like you're locked in, you're focused in and, and, and I feel like you're not like the only one there's like athletes. Um, um, have you seen the last dance yet? Yes. Jordan? Right. Yeah. Like when, when they talk, when Jordan talks about just getting into that zone, when, mm -hmm. as soon as they, you know, like before the game starts and, and he's just locked in and I feel like a lot of competitors or even athletes um, just have that zone or, you know, to that point, anybody, musicians or anybody, they, it's just that zone where, when they, when yeah. they're in, like there's a, um, I saw this one time, um, Dr. Dre, I guess he was, um, he was in the zone one time. It's called a state of flow. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm not wrong, it's called a state of flow. Right. One time, I guess Dr. Dre was in the studio for like two, three days straight because yeah. he, he had that creative process going and he, he was, uh, he was so scared that if he left that, that it wasn't going to come back. And um, he was in the studio for two, three days. And I, I'm, I'm not sure what song he ended up singing, <laughs> but it was it was one of like the one of his top songs, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I, I get what you're saying that you you kind of just get in that zone. And then from like at first, you're like you're like, like, because when I first went to like a big national tournament, my first year, I was like, like, I got like, it's like, damn, there's so many people like, why are they like, but then like, I noticed like, all right, just got to do your thing. Like you're just zone out and you're just like, Honestly, you, can, you can't even hear nothing, honestly, when you're just in the zone. You're just focused, like, so focused, like, you feel like you're blacked out, but you're not. Man, that's wild. And then um, I kind of wanted to ask you, it's, it's kind of um, the big elephant in the room, and I know it's a, a Team Selma Wrestling motto, and it's um, no transfer at all, right? Mm -hmm. No transfer. Yeah, and, and, and so how does that compare to – Salma being um, kind of homegrown and kids coming through the program from from the 
like youth level all the way through when they get to high school compared to these um, big powerhouses in the Valley, like say Buchanan or, or Clovis, like w what do you think the biggest differences are? Um, I mean, obviously the biggest difference is just being homegrown, but like, yeah. and like, like the, the overall, like, you know, like um, the feeling of it. Cause, mm -hmm. cause you know, at the end of the day, people are going to be like, Hey man, we got to do what we got to do to win these state titles. Right. Yeah. So if they, if they're going to recruit, they're going to recruit, but like, w what does that mean to you? That to just be homegrown and, and and to stay together. Um, yeah, um, that's a good one. So um, I don't like it's it's good because like the guys you grew up with, like you know them, like you know how they are. They are like you could push them to their limits and stuff, and um, it shows like character. You know, like all right, like I know what he's been through, or whatever. So you can reflect on that. And um, compared to other ones, like you don't know this kid. Like he just joined because we're good. You know, like what is he doing here? Like you know. Like, that's what, and plus, like, those boys have you back. You don't know if that guy has your back if it comes down to it or whatever. Yeah. Like, that's what I feel like homegrown is. And, like, sticking with those people is, like, kind of showing loyalty and everything. So, and then other schools that have powerhouses, like, why switch up? Like, you, you can't trust your coaches or anything. Like, you can't trust no one. Yeah. Like, you got to switch to a good team, you know? Like, nah. Yeah. I mean, at, at some point, it probably just gets frustrated, yeah. right? Year after year, yeah. they get the best guys in the state to, to transfer to their program. And mm -hmm. it probably gets a little frustrating. I remember when I, um, we were in high school and the, the same situation was going on um, with mm -hmm. basketball and Emmanuel High School. They were getting some really good basketball players. And I remember it was just kind of frustrating. You know, you're like, wow, like these guys just can't stay at their schools, you know? Well, like, Yeah, it's kind of different because like wrestling, it's it's like a – it's individual so like you want to win as a team and then at the same time like you're by your like you gotta get yourself recruited like yeah you're not get that person recruited with you it's just you you know yeah no i i 100 agree that um total different spectrums wrestling and, and basketball yeah. but just kind of wanted to make that little analogy right there that, I think that yeah i've been seeing a lot of kinds of people going to different states just because they're prep or whatever yeah like, why, why don't you want to be, say you're homegrown or whatever, why not stay there, you know, and you, put on for, like, where that, that's whatever you are, you're at, like, like me wearing the S, I still rock it, even with my sun kiss, because they're with the S, I was like, all right, we have the S, because it's, it's Salma, and then I sun kiss, whatever. You, you've never even, like, considered it, nothing, never even popped up in your head to do that, or were you ever approached to, hey, come to our academy, we'll get you college ready, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, nah, I have like, not like coaches like talk like, hey, come on, like come to yeah. like our high school team or whatever. I'd be like, nah, I mean, like I'll, I'll train with different coaches and stuff because of like what I see into them and what they could help me with. And that's what I do. Like instead of like switching, I'd rather go train with them and then I'll bring it back to like where Salma and the show, my coaches or whoever needs help, just bring back knowledge and stuff. No, yeah, I, I I like that approach better um, as opposed to just leaving right away, right? Yeah. Like yeah. the KD effect, you know, just leaving instead, yeah. of, <laughs> instead, of, <laughs> instead of having to just deal with the adversity. And yeah. I, like, I like how you said that you'd rather just go train with the coaches and be a sponge and kind of just gather all the knowledge that they have. Yeah. Like, um, whether that's, that's, what, like, what, yeah, that's what like some kids don't do. Like they just stick to one person, you know, like there's so many techniques out there you can learn from everybody. Just because that person is good and he made it doesn't mean like other people had different techniques, you know? Yeah, no, that's why I, I, that's where I was kind of getting to. And I like how, like you said, like you'd rather just be like a sponge and kind of go get your knowledge from a guy that's really good at folk style. And then he, and then another guy that's really good at, at freestyle and kind of just pick their brain, go train with them, um, go see what it's like to train with them. And then maybe you could bring maybe, you know, something small back, maybe if it's yeah. the intensity or maybe if it's just, you know, like, um, just communication maybe it's just how how they explain something how to explain or how they run some drills and then you could bring back to Selma um you know communicate without the coaches or you as a, like I'm, I'm assuming you as a as a leader just kind of yeah. tell the guys like yo this is how this is what I learned I really thought it was cool uh we should implement this or or whatever it may be yeah that's good yeah no that's that's uh that's something really cool that you get to do that especially because you're well connected you know and you yeah. have the ability to go and train with these 
uh, whoever it may be, you know, some people yeah. that are just good wrestlers and that have been in the game for X amount of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, so, so, what was that? It said it helps a lot, honestly. Like, people don't know, like, training with different people and stuff. Like, it helps really a lot. <laughs> um, do you think California is, is the hardest state to, to wrestle in in high school? I would say, yeah, honestly, yeah. Because there's only one, one state. You know, I mean, not one state, but like just one um, state tournament. Like, yeah. there's no, there's no sections into it, and the brackets are like thirty plus, I think. So, yeah. it's a uh, like five, six matches. Yeah. Like, so it's pretty tough. So I was doing a little bit of research on that, and, and and it's insane to me that in California history there have only been four, four times state champion, and. And that's the that's the equivalent to the NCAA in the NCAA at the collegiate level that there's only been four um, NC uh, like four four time champs and that and that's just crazy to me you know that it, it kind of just shows that California is not easy to wrestle in and mm-hmm. especially be consistent in because I've heard from um, multiple guys guys that are our friends that I went to school with that if um, that if they they weren't making excuses or nothing but easily that if they were wrestling in a different state they would be four time champs but the just the competition level in California is is so insanely yeah. high right and then that that it's it's impossible to be consistent um de, uh, year in and year out because you know like it's bro it's like you said there's 30 something dudes in yeah. in your, in your uh, bracket and if you have one off match that could be the difference yeah anything honestly anything can happen that state. my coach told me Sam like anything could happen so I mean you got to be on your A game every like sacking like you can't mess up or else you never know you might get put on your back or something so I mean state I think anywhere is hard because like I mean anything can happen honestly like if you're losing six I mean losing six here you could come back with the pin and win it you know yeah I know what you're saying um so uh we've we've kind of discussed a, a lot of uh the things already and I want to kind of walk into what you felt tra- um the transition from middle school uh coming into high school so what was that transition like um coming in and, and and wrestling with the team um the coaches I'm pretty sure you were already well uh, acquainted with them and already trained with them but the the coaches and what what like what just your freshman experience was for you um my freshman year, I mean it was tough I mean I had to do a lot of freaking, like, a lot of work, honestly. Like, I had to, like, start grinding for that scholarship, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I was getting beat up every day in the room by, like, Rob, Luis, Tristan, all those lower weight guys and stuff. Yeah. So, um, like, it was tough at first, and, like, I just started getting used to it and then just slicking some of them, but, like, still getting beat up still. But, I mean, it prepared me um, a lot, honestly. Um, it's tough. Honestly, I was like, damn, it's tough. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but you just got to fight, do extra practices and extra workouts and you'll be all good. And you went 106 is your freshman year? Yeah, I went 106. And you were, you said, like you said, you were training with Tristan and, and Rob and these guys and they were kind of just beating you up and, and that kind of just yeah. helped you just build yourself and kind of get ready to wrestle um, the guy's the same, same weight as you, but then you're kind of used to just, you know, um, rolling around with yeah. bigger guys, so you kind of feel that strength yeah. and all that. Yeah, so, like, yeah, wrestling with bigger guys, I like to do because, um, I mean, I'd rather work on someone heavier, a little bit heavier than me, than when I wrestle someone my way. It would be kind of easy or just a little bit easy, but, yeah. And the number of matches in a season, is that always the same or does it bear, like vary? Um, um, like maybe if you have an injury or you set out a tournament or something like that? Um, like I think it's like you need to have at least a, over 20 or something like that to um, be able to have match count. I mean, because if you have too much, um, I think it's too much. Like you can't wrestle or something. Like some weird rule, like yeah. you can't have that much matches. Yeah, because I was reading online and and uh, there was an article was, and it said that you went forty eight and two at your freshman year. Is that true? Yeah, my freshman year went forty eight two. Those two losses were from out of state um, at this uh, tough tournament, like the, the toughest high school I think um, tournament's called Ironman, and yeah. like it's I mean not that much people win it from California, 
or has won it in the Valley. Only like three or four, I say, from California ever won that tournament. And they're from like the South like Alley area. Man, yeah. So I, I, I read that um, you lost at Ironman and then you you got to avenge those losses too, right? Uh, yeah, I ended up that next year because um, was I made my first world team after my freshman year. So I ended up taking um, silver during that. And then um, I had the chance to wrestle one of those guys that who's number one after my fresh, um, after that um, world trip. And uh, I beat him with one zero. I mean, it's just dub, but I wish I performed in the, I wrestled the other kid at, um, I think it was my junior year or sophomore year in the semis at Super 32 and ended up beating him in the semis like three to zero no five to zero and i won that term the finals at uh, at the end do you usually remember who gives you like a run for your money or if you have a really good match with like and then like you said you were kind of already like i beat this guy 5-0 or whatever so you you kind of remember the scores too um yeah but then like at the same time like you start you start from scratch like no one cares about what happens last time you know like what can you do again so yeah. uh I mean, I always get nervous. Like everyone gives me a run, honestly. Like it could be someone that's like not good. I mean, I get nervous from that guy because I don't know what this guy knows or whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, if you're not nervous, then you're not ready to um, wrestle. That's or, how you feel? Yeah, because even like with anybody, everyone, if you ask, like, I don't know, just like other people like, that are good at different sports, like you ever get nervous at something? They'd be like, yeah, I mean, it's it's that fight. Like, you're ready to go, you know? It's like, it's not that nervous, like, I'm scared, but it's, like, nervous. Like, Anxious. Like, yeah. Just being, you're just ready. You're, you're anticipating, like, the match. Like, you're trying mm -hmm. to, you want to get it on the road already. Yeah. And so, is, it, is it harder for you to wrestle somebody that is super technical or someone that's really scrappy and they're kind of, like, unpredictable? Um, Honestly, like, I wrestle all kinds of people, so... I mean, then like training with these different coaches that know different styles and like techniques from different ties and stuff. So, I mean, it helps because I learned like I would know like hey, if this guy does something, I would know how to get out or score from it. So, I mean, I could say um, like the guys I would hate to wrestle is just tall guys, honestly. I don't <laughs> like wrestling tall guys because I see them make a, like, make a pin anybody, cradle anybody from anywhere. So, I would say tall guys. I would hate, I hate wrestling, honestly. <laughs> um, and then I wanted to ask you, like, there's a lot of tournaments going on in, in high school. So there's like the California tournaments, obviously. And mm -hmm. um, they're all usually in order. Can you kind of just clarify that, that up for me? Like, it, it, I know it starts off and there's a lot of tournaments. Yeah. That I remember um, you guys will go to and I would kind of keep up with it. But there, um, do you remember them in order still? Uh, yeah, a couple. So, like, usually, like, our coach would either, um, uh, what's the code? It would be, like, uh, Zinkin. So, it would be, like, the California terms would just be Zinkin, Doc B, then State, or, like, our Masters and all that. And then there's, like, I think it's five counties, like, the like one of the first ones? Five counties is after Doc B. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. see, like, I, I remember um, just just hearing, I remember, I think, one year I, I went to one of the five counties just to kind of support the guys, but, yeah, you know, and, like, it's crazy. They'll, all those lead up going into the state tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because those match counts count to your regular season and stuff. Okay, so your, your freshman year, uh, how did you uh, perform at those tournaments? So, Zeke and um, I ended up wrestling the guy I wrestled in the state finals, like, four times out of that whole – year so um I, I beat him 5-0 at Zinkin and Doc B um I beat some kid from New Jersey he was the number one seed five five to zero or something like that and then um five counties those was a close match it was two to one I think two to one um some kid from Washington um I should have beat him by more but I just because I wrestled him so many times I'm like damn like yeah, you we knew like what we were gonna do, but not really because it's been so long. But I was just like, I was just kind of zoned out, low key. But I mean, that and then the state I wrestled um, what's it called? The the same guy I wrestled at Zinkin beat him. I think it was eight zero, no eight one or something like that. And then that was it. 
So you went on quite the run your freshman year. Uh, yeah. I mean, and then you kind of mentioned that there's out of state guys that come to these California tournaments. So how does how does that work? Um, some schools let their um, states or uh, come to our tournament. So um, which is good because um, I mean you just don't want to wrestle just California guys. You want to be able to prove to colleges that you could compete with other guys from different um, um, states and stuff. So. I mean, at least like four or five different states that come to Dog B and stuff, so which is pretty good. Okay, and then you you win Doc B. That's the one with the hat, right? You win a cowboy hat. Yeah. yeah. And it I seems like that one is is is, is like really like important to win too, because when you win that, you get one, you get yeah. that, and then two, you kind of get to flex on Buchanan, right? Like. Yeah. <laughs> like we came to your <laughs> tournament. We came to your tournament and took a, took a I took the hat from you guys. For um, honestly, Dog B is like my favorite tournament. Honestly, like it's just because the crowd and how it, it is is just I I feel like it's better than the state tournament. Honestly, I feel For like really? there's more pressure. On, yeah, I feel like there's more pressure on you because like I don't know. It's it's a nat. I feel like it's a national tournament. You know, oh, okay. it's a yeah, national tournament. Just because, like you said, um, there's people coming from a lot of different states too. Yeah, so I always think like, hey, if it's national, then it's bigger. You know. So, yeah. uh, like, I mean, I still treat every tournament as a national tournament, but, like, for some reason, like, I feel like that one's better than – even though, like, winning the state title is good, I love, like, that's, like, one of my favorite things to, like, win since I, like, what, we've been, been a kid. It's, it's always been, like, in my head, like, you got to win. You got to win that state title. And so um, you – um, you end up winning state as a freshman. So what did that feel like? I know um, – I think I was there. That was, I think that is, was it the last year that they, they did the single um, spotlight that it's, it's, it's not like that anymore. Yeah. No. Uh, it's not because the girls can't. So um, it was like, it was cool. Honestly, like it showed like the hard work you put in and stuff and, and just doing it with my coach. Like that's been there. Like coach George has been there since the beginning with all of us, like just seeing him happy, making me like win. It was just like, damn, like, we did it, you know, like all those yeah. hour, hours of working and stuff. Off. So, and close, co of course, Coach Sam, and he played a big part, you know, the guy, I mean, not just in wrestling, but like in life too. So um, it was pretty dope to win it with those coaches. Yeah. So, um, I remember being there and just watching you win it. And I remember it was just like so exciting just to watch one, one, cause you know, you're from Salmo, you, you took the dub and then two, just um, just like you, how you said, like you get into mm -hmm. represent the, the community and then also kind of see the look on on your coach's face of, of, yeah. kind of just relief, you know, like all that hard work is paid off. And especially mm -hmm. like the coaches you just named, um, Coach Joey and Sam, they're OGs. Um, I, I got to wrestle under Coach Joey for a year and, and, and he's he's I don't know, man, like he, he's a savage, dude. Like he he. He just I mean, he keeps he it real, honestly. He does, he does for sure. And I, I only wrestled for him for a year, and and he kind of he taught me a lot about myself, just kind of digging deep. And and when I think it's enough, it, it's not really enough. So, um, yeah. Coach Joey, and same thing with Coach Sam. You know, when it's it's a business trip, it's business. But yeah. he's, just a, he's he's a funny guy, and and, and like yeah. you said, like you know, um, it's just hard to to express those emotions when when you went through that. Um, when you train with these and you're kind of yeah. training under them and then you finally you win and then you know you kind of have that moment together and um i think it's really cool that you got to have that um at, at, like in your first year of high school mm -hmm. and, and plus it's been like so long since i think it's the last state champ we had was since alex in 2012 mm -hmm. that was our last state champ so since that, then. that is something that I, I wanted to eventually address, but since you brought it up, um, and yeah. that, that was obviously the last um, almost uh, four timer, and, and he um, he is obviously. I remember I was like real young uh, hearing about him, and he was making a lot of noise, uh, mm -hmm. winning three times state champ, going into his fourth year, and mm -hmm. then um, like you said, you know, you always have to be kind of ready. He, he's up. Yeah. And then he he gets you know throw to his back and and loses in in a crazy fashion, and mm -hmm. and now you have the the chance to almost redeem his loss and and kind of you know put Sama back on the map and and to put yourself on the map because it's a it's a it's a feature that not 
a lot of people have done. Like I said earlier, only four people have done it. So mm -hmm. it's something that you, you know, you have the opportunity to do and it kind of, you know, um, avenge that loss for Alex. And even though, you know, he had a, a great uh, wrestling career, you know, it's something that kind of sticks and, and people will remember about, about Selma. Yeah. That's the thing I hate. Like, man, you guys almost did it, but like that one. So like, that thing just like takes me off. Like, man, I want to win that. Like I want to win the fourth time, not just because like, to make me seem cool or whatever, but like just for Salma, you know, like putting on for that, for that um, S and the community and stuff. And just where we're from, it's all small and we're, we're a wrestling town and I want to show that to people. Yeah, bro. And um, you have the whole town behind you for sure on that. And um, so kind of moving on, I, I wanted to, um, just like how we talked about the state tournaments, what are the national tournaments that you're going to like? I know you, you go to um there's a there's a lot there's there's flow nationals yeah. there's uh who's number one and then mm -hmm. there's um the cadet world team that you're trying mm -hmm. out for so like what is that process like is it something that you have to do on the side and kind of contact these these tournaments that hey i want to go here or is it something that they go off of from your state record like hey this guy placed that state um sometimes yeah some tournaments are like that so um like flow um i mean you could register but like um like sometimes tournaments be like, oh, if you place at this tournament, you gotta come to this or like something like that's only like some that's rare. That's very rare. But yeah, like the side tournaments, like I mean, I train hard for those because like I got like I mean my parents are putting money into me and stuff, and I gotta the outcome is me getting a scholarship, you know, that free that free ride and stuff. So yeah, I mean, like flow. Um, I do it with Sunkiss, one of my sponsors, the Monster Garage, and then um, the War Team Trials. I do it with them. And um, that's it. Just like after, like the time I go with um, out of national tournaments would be after our state. So that's when yeah. I usually hit different states and stuff. And then you wrestled who's number one your freshman year too? Uh, no, that would be the beginning of my sophomore year. Oh, okay, that's when it started your, your sophomore year? Yeah. And then what was the world team you were, is so can you explain to me what, what it's like? So your first two years of high school, your freshman and sophomore year, if you try for the world team, you're you're under the cadet. Um, yeah, cadet. So you're under the cadet thing. Um, your cadets are because it goes cadet, juniors, and then seniors, which are like the 25 and up. Then you, then the juniors are like 22 and through like 18 or something like 18 to 20, like two or something like that. So, um, I mean, like winning that that puts you on the radar for colleges. Yeah, really big, like the top top colleges and your freshman year you you end up so it's the world team trials you, you try out and then mm -hmm. you to represent the united states in yes. in the tournament that was in um croatia croatia okay. so, so you so you what, what was just the, the the team trials like just in general because you're trying out against all these guys that are trying to beat you out for this weight so they could represent the united states so what was that like uh i mean it was tough i mean everyone was ranked there you had the top 10 guys off the back or like within like your second match or whatever so I mean it was tough um I know how to be prepared um not to do any dumb things because in freestyle you could get two points easy off a dumb trip or whatever so I mean you just have to be on your on freestyle you have to be on your A game all the time and just know where your surroundings are so going into that but I knew that like with the training I did which like was hard really hard I was gonna come out with the win and victory at the end so you end up uh beating all these guys at 106 uh the, i went 10 i went 105.8 oh okay so you you uh 105.8 you beat out all these guys in the u.s and then you go over to Cro uh, croatia and you go mm -hmm. represent the united states and it um is it true i read in an article that the night before the matches that um uh they had like a like a match or something and it was really really loud and you couldn't sleep before the the matches oh yeah so because like um it goes by like there's weight classes but like different days so like i was the second day or something like that and um no i think i was the first day but croatia um during that time was in for soccer for the world cup so oh. everyone like so they're they're making they made it to the semis and what's it called they um were um 
and when they won the semis or something or the quarters or whatever they were just partying in the street like the whole street was just blowing horns and everything it was like I woke up, it was like 3 a.m. I was like, what, what is going on? Like, someone, like, is someone shooting or something? So I look out, I just see everyone in checkers, like jerseys, just like, like in the street of the Croatia and just going crazy. I mean, it's, it's crazy how they so, show support to their country compared with, like, to what we do. Like, yeah. I you mean, don't see that. Yeah. Like, soccer's not big here. Uh, yeah. Um, and, um, but did that kind of affect your performance going into that next day or was it just kind of, Something you just like had to deal with and you just put it to the side. Yeah, I just put it to the side. I was like, hey, at least I will remember this for my whole life. Like that was pretty cool. And yeah. I just went to bed and and just went straight to business after that. And then the next day you wrestle and you make it all the way to the finals. And um just talk about the experience of of wrestling these guys from different countries and, and what that meant and what that meant for you. Um, yeah. So um, I mean it's it's pretty crazy, honestly. Like like winning one match is good because those guys over there that do freestyle, they practice freestyle every day. We don't. Us um, Americans, we just do folk style or regular. The only time we do um, freestyle is only for like three or four months. That's it. But then out of country, they do that their whole life since they were young enough. And um, it was pretty um, like good like for me to wrestle those guys because then that like next year I'm like all right these these Americans are not as good as these guys so um I mean I remember winning my first match I was kind of nervous like this guy has some big old quads from Japan like his legs were big and I was like damn I'm about to get messed up but um I just went out there um like I hit my first double I was feeling good I hit my double on him I got a four right away then I hit another one and I ended up pinning him then um my second match I had a Russian and um, and Russians are the number one are number one in the whole country for rest. I mean for wrestling and stuff. Yeah. So um, I was kind of nervous. I was like, damn, like, am I gonna get messed up or something? But I ended up um, taking him, like, within the first round. Then um, I had a kid from I think it was Poland or I forgot where he was from. I ended up beating him like 10 to 10 to two or something like that. And then finals, I wrestled this Azerbaijan kid. Um, he's he won the world uh, the world title last year at a lower weight, but this year he's at my way in. I mean, I felt good the first round. I mean, I was up one zero. Then the second round, um, I kind of messed up honestly. Like I should have slowed down the pace, and he just he just caught me on a dumb mistake. That I mean. Like those things that cost you, those little mistakes will cost you. And that's what happened. And end up getting forward to my back. And um, by that time, like I was just trying to come back for that lead. And then I tried to go for a big throw at the end and it just didn't work out. Yeah. But, I mean, overall, I mean, it was a great experience wrestling those guys. I mean, I, um, I put on for USA, hopefully, and for Salma. That's, and that was it. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, Bro, silver is good, and, and you're, what, 14, 15 years old, and you're mm -hmm. going out of, of the country to represent the United States, and that's, a, that's I think, that's like one of the biggest things, because you're not representing Salma anymore, uh, mm -hmm. you're not representing California, you're, you're, you're representing United States as a whole, and, yeah. and, and, and that's just, you know, that's, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around that, and yeah. to kind of just throw it off and be like, yeah, I'm just, oh, you know, I'm wrestling at this tournament, it, it's yeah. kind of a big deal. But you go there and you still perform at the highest level, which I think is uh, very impressive, but not as impressive as I think the coolest thing about your freshman year was um, that you and your sister both got they both you guys both won the state title, uh, mm -hmm. becoming the first um, brother, sister, sibling duo to kind of do that. Um, so talk about that, what that felt like. I mean, it was cool. I mean, like we, I, I already knew that. If we worked hard, we're going to be able to accomplish anything and do this. So, I mean, she worked hard. I mean, the girl she wrestled, I mean, she, my sister has been wrestling with, like, the guys. So, I mean, I feel like that made her more better than the, the girls that she wrestled. So, um, it just had to come down to me, honestly. <laughs> At the end of the day, I just had to get it through, and I did. So, I mean, it was great. I mean, some, that was a story I could tell, too, when I have kids or two other people, like me and my sister, one and stuff. Oh, for sure, bro. That's a, that's just something really cool. doesn't happen as often, right? Like it just doesn't happen that all siblings 
or your siblings that are performing at the highest level. So I thought it was really cool that you guys got to experience that moment. And um, it's something that you will for sure cherish forever. So mm -hmm. that, that you kind of topped it off and then you go into your sophomore year and now you're resting at 113s? Yes. And no, then, 106 again. 106. I cut I cut again to 106. And you're so so then you start wrestling um the local tournaments again and then you you end up um doing the same thing at Zinkin and, and, and Doc B and you make your make it all the way through and then it's it's round two now at um at the state um title or you're you know you're going for your second title and um, I've seen a few interviews and I want to kind of just ask you what it feels like to be in the tunnel, right? I feel like, I, I imagine that it's kind of like just a crazy experience to be in the tunnel and get your name called out in front of thousands of people. So what does that feel like? I mean, it's cool. I mean, it's kind of like, like nervous because you're like, damn, like that's about to get real, you know, like, yeah. I'm about like these people. So like, I just, I, then once I step, like when I'm about to come out, I just zone out right away, boom. Cause I have my headphones on, so I just zone out. But just like going through the tunnel or whatever is pretty cool. Like it feels like you're in like in a movie or something, honestly. <laughs> and then what do you what are you listening to in your headphones? I, I um I know that your 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 freshman year or no, your first who's number one that you you ran out to uh California Love. And yeah. then this past one, uh, you were supposed to come out to Too Short and they messed it up or something? Yeah, they messed it up. Uh, well, yeah, my second year going to Who's Number One. Yeah, I was supposed to come out to Too Short, but they ended up playing it for that guy when I got that guy's song, which was <laughs> Steve-O that once got my name is Steve-O or whatever. <laughs> so, um, uh, what's it called? Yeah, it was that. Then my third year, I came out to some like Mexican music, Al Ray or something like that. Yeah, so um, what kind of music do you really kind of listen to to get you in the zone? Um, is it kind of kind of serious, or you just kind of something just gets you loose and gets you in that mindset? Honestly, just that party song, that Mike Shermer, like <laughs> just, just just like something like cool. Like I don't like getting like heavy metal. Like yeah, like, I don't know. I just like to have like just like some dancing, like because I like to dance. Or whatever, yeah. So something that could catch me, like, like stepping and stuff, bobbing my head, and just like like Tupac, um, like SOB and just whatever, like local, what we listen to and stuff. Yeah, stuff. no, I, I feel you, you kind of, you don't, you kind of want to escape the seri seriousness of the event and kind of just kind of. It kind of helps you, honestly, like, because yeah. then in the match, you're kind of thinking about a song. Okay, I, I like that lyric, all right? <laughs> just like, <laughs> you're just flowing. So you end up winning um, your sophomore year too. And then, and then you're, you're, it's your second time winning the state title. I mean, is there less pressure now? Is it is it almost kind of um, expected? Because you you know you you know you're coming through the year and who you um, yeah. eventually you're gonna face in the finals and stuff. So was it kind of expected already? Did you already know, or was it still um, you know keep your eyes on the prize and don't get too cocky? Yeah, I was like that. I mean, people expect me was to win it that year because I was going the same way, but like they didn't like know the just sacrifice I had to do and stuff because we had a really good team and I want everyone to be able to compete and at least win a state title, you know, not just me. I want more people from Salmon to win state titles, at least yeah. have the most kids on that podium for Salmon than other schools and stuff. So, um, like, yeah, I mean, like, I, I was I'm, – I'm never too um, cocky, just, like, people that just, like um, – that doubt me or just, like, people that just talk trash. Like, when I win, then after I celebrate, like, like – yeah, that's that's how I show kind of. I mean, I say if you want to say cocky, but that's how I entertain people, just celebrating at the end and stuff. Yeah, and then you you finish the state uh, the state tournament, and then do you still go and wrestle those national tournaments all over again? The the, the yes. Ironman, the and all the other national ones, flows and all that. Yeah, yeah, because not until like junior year, um, you don't start getting recruited, so um, you have to um still perform and like go to those tournaments so you can still have those coaches keep an eye on you and stuff and um end up that year like after my sophomore year I uh I ended up making the world team again and stuff and um I went to Bulgaria went to and that Bulgaria. was your, your junior year uh sophomore man of, man of a sophomore year the end of sophomore year and you wrestle in Bulgaria and 
So what was that experience like? It's another international experience. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that place is crazy, honestly. Like, I wouldn't want to visit that place again. Like, it's whack. Um, but overall, the tournament, I mean, like, I didn't even do good at all. Like, like it was just a bump on the head. Like, I don't know. It was just something weird. Like, like it was just didn't click. And um, I didn't win, win not, no matches because if you lose a match, you got to have that guy pull you in, but that guy that I lost to um, ended up losing his second match barely. So I had to wait to either if I'm going to cut weight or not. And he ended up losing. So I was put out the tournament, but um, just even, even though wrestling those guys is still a great experience because it shows like not all the slick moves could win you like a, a good um, a match or something. Like this guy beat me off a basic block shot to a single leg and laced me up. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. And then, so you kind of just get over that and you kind of just enjoy the experience Mm -hmm. and you get back. um, I assume you train, train hard again. And Mm -hmm. then it's the start of your junior year. So what's the transition like now? Cause you're an upperclassman now and, 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 you know, time's running out on the clock, you know, you don't, you don't have a lot of um, time left and and Mm -hmm. you're making the most of, of it. So what was that like? Uh, I mean, it was crazy. Um, wait, say it again. My bad. My bad. Oh, no, no, you're good. You're good. So, I, I said, like, so you take the you, you know, you you go to Bulgaria, uh, mm. you, you know, have a few losses, but you enjoy the experience anyway. And then I, I said that, uh, you're entering your junior year, and now, like, the time's running out, right? So, you've already wrestled two years, and, and now you only have two more left. So, uh, you know, you go straight to work, start working out, yeah. and now you're getting ready for your junior year. So, you enter your junior year. Um, which was last year, uh, what was that like? Because now you're at 113s? Uh, yeah, my 113s junior year. And so, I, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, there's some kids that were dropping down just to wrestle me and stuff. And um, I really had to be on that year and stuff. So um, I ended up going to who's number one, beating the kid um, 8-0. And then like after a couple months, recruiting started coming. Uh, we college started um, calling me and stuff like hey we want you to come visit and stuff um so like, i got to tell a couple coaches because you only could do five visits and stuff so oh for uh, real yeah you only get five like you see like those football players go to all kinds or whatever yeah, yeah. it's like unofficial i think it's it's unofficial so like they pay for their those the, the parents have to pay for that oh the- okay so it, i understand what you're saying i was thinking that that it, it's kind of it's on the on the schools right like if, if- yeah if you want to go to as many as you can, that's but like the colleges could still shoot you like offers and you could post it or whatever. Like, yeah. does it mean like, say if like you don't want to visit them as your top five, they can still shoot your offer, I think, or whatever. I don't know how it works, but yeah, you only get five. So, um, I had like, uh, all the top schools call me and stuff. So it was pretty cool. Like showed, I mean like, damn, I did it, you know, like, yeah, like my mom could finally just, chillax and stuff and um so uh, after that I didn't really kind of pay attention to it because I knew I had a big season coming and taught a lot of tough guys that I was going to have to beat that year so um I mean it was a grind honestly that um that junior year did you take any of those visits or were you just like nah I'm uh well I was only to do uh three because um which was Ohio State Michigan ASU then the other two uh were going to be um Oklahoma State and Penn State, but coronavirus hit and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of um, um, bummers because like that, because that um, after stay after I won, I was supposed to go to um, Oklahoma State. Then that's when they canceled. That's when the coronavirus came out and then canceled everything. Man. And then you said you only went to three campuses. And mm-hmm. uh, this is entering your junior year when you go on these trips? Uh, this is like um, actually like the be- before season starts like kind of like um preseason yeah so like yeah so it was like in between there and stuff and then like you during visit- our- yeah and then you visit these colleges which i'm assuming is just is just you're at all yeah. right because this is what you work toward the, the entire yeah. time so which campus yeah. kind of just immediately sticks out to you and also the coaches and stuff i'm pretty sure they're in touch with you oh, well, um well already committed to um arizona state so, yeah. um, and I like them because, um, I mean, they're great people. Um, we have the, 
the word class and everything. And I did my research and stuff because you want to know who, who you're going to be going under as or who you're going to be coached by. And I feel like they could get me where I need to be in, which is a world champ and Olympic champ and NCAA champ. But I mean, all the coaches are good, honestly. Um, uh, like Tom Ryan, he was a cool guy. Um, funny. I mean, he loved everyone, no matter what. He gave gave me a hug or whatever. Just he was a very a hyper guy. I would say he just the hype man. I'll call him a hype man. And um, the Michigan the head coach, uh, Coach Sean Borman. Um, he's cool, really, really relaxed, just calm, kept it real and stuff. Like yeah, just like everyone has different types of personalities. So I was just like is he like okay or something? Cause like, you know how like, we just, yeah. <laughs> so, but like, yeah, they're all cool. Honestly, all those coaches that recruited me are all cool. They kept it a hundred. I kept it a hundred with them and stuff. So it was pretty fun. And then you ended up choosing Arizona State uh, University, which um, mm -hmm. I remember reading, or I remember someone broke the news to me and I was like, man, that, that's crazy. You know, he finally committed and uh, that's a really huge accomplishment. Uh, for you, one, and then two, um, as a as a community, because you know you you like you said you do it for the S on your chest, you do it for someone. So it was really big accomplishment that um, that you achieved, and I want to congratulate you on that because not a lot of people one get to get to one just experience that right, and then yeah. two to kind of get out of the valley to mm -hmm. um, put on for the rest of the city. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. So then you start wrestling your your junior season, and then uh, you start going through this, these local tournaments again, yeah. and, and same result. Uh, you wrestle the same same tournaments. Yeah, same tournaments except I didn't do five counties that year, um, just match count stuff. But um, the guy I wrestled each tournament leading to I wrestled that him the finals within like the four tournaments we had to wrestle. So I mean. Like, it was kind of tough because, I mean, we, we know what we did, and I just had to change it up here and there and stuff, just a little small twist because, like, going through my back of match is like, all right, this is what I need to do different yeah. and, whatever, and stuff, and then that was it. And that man was Joey Cruz? Yeah. yeah Joey. So how did that feel wrestling someone that's formerly from, from Selma? And you kind of, I'm pretty sure you guys have kind of – um you know, met at local tournaments, maybe even yeah. at tournaments uh, when you guys were a little younger. But now you guys are facing off at the highest level um, in in the state, which is at the state tournament, or mm -hmm. leading, all these tournaments leading up to the state tournament. So what was that like? I mean, like, I mean, I just treated it as every match, like, he's just a person, you know? Um, yeah. It was just like, it was just kind of weird, like, us wrestling against each other, like, dang, like, we're about to wrestle, like we used to back then, but... I mean, it was kind of different because we're at different schools now or he's at a different school. So, um, I mean, I kept it. I treated it as every match the same and stuff. So, I mean, I, just, I knew how to come out there with 100% on my A game and just play it smart and stuff. Yeah, um, I watched a little clip of the video and, man, like, you guys were just going at it uh, leading up to, yeah. you know, the few weeks and then um, the, the finals match at State. You end up taking the dub, mm -hmm. and now you're a three-time uh, state champion. Um, I assume that, you know, it's just a lot of nerves going through you at that moment. Um, you, you're holding up three on the yeah. podium. Uh, what does that feel like? You're a three-time state champion. Yeah. You're you're one more year away, one more state tournament away from accomplishing your one of your, um, your short-term goals. So what does that feel like? Uh, I mean, it's crazy. Like, I'm already at three, you know, like, when so like when the guys said from like robbing them like college I mean not college high school goes by fast like trust me when you're busy and stuff it goes by fast and I was like no way it doesn't I thought it was gonna take forever honestly but it comes out like it's fast I'm like I'm ready to see me about to head to college next well this year and um it was just like dang I already I was, since I have three I mean might as well just get this fourth one and just make history and make I uh, just want to make Salma proud and stuff. Yep. Um, so right after that that state tournament, after you won three, do you you wrestle Joey again at Flow Nationals? Or was that a year? No, um I wrestled him twice my yeah, that was the year before. You wrestled uh, I wrestled him my freshman year at 
folk style because that's when Flo was it. Then I lost to him my sophomore, my end of my sophomore year. Okay. At, at freestyle, which I shouldn't have. I lost off a dumb mistake, like I said. Yeah. But and- end up revenging that within four or five times you wrestle, I ended up revenging him and stuff. So. So that yeah, that must feel good. I was I kind of got it mixed up with you wrestling him your junior year, but and then you go to who's number yeah. one. And then you're you're trying to be the first. You're in a position where you are um, up there, and you're about to yeah. become one of the first, um, the first three time yeah. number one champ. So, what what are the nerves mm-hmm. like just just entering uh, this tournament? And and then um, we'll talk about the result after. Uh, I mean, like I was like, uh, at first, like uh, they were trying to find me a match, and um, they're like the only guy like. We want you, like, I guess we, like you said, like, no one, like, is kind of good at your level or whatever. I was like, just give me whoever. And then they gave me Drake. I was like, all right, like, I wanted this match. And then, like, leading up to it, um, like, I got hurt off of practice and stuff on my LCL and stuff. So, mm-hmm. which I was, like, out for, like, a month before the tournament, I mean, the match. So, I mean, I couldn't really wrestle and stuff. Like, I only got to wrestle for, like, a week coming up to that uh, match and, um, I mean, it's not an excuse, but, like, damn, if I had more time just to practice and, like, get my rhythm back, I mean, it would be a different outcome and stuff. But, I mean, hats off to him, you know. I should have came with my A game and stuff. But, I mean, I want that match again for sure in in the future. And you guys wrestled at 120? We wrestled at 125. So, it was like a – it wasn't really at the weight class. It was just kind of like a – like a super match, I guess, or whatever. So, um, yeah, I mean, he ended up winning and stuff in overtime and uh, just did a mistake again, and that was it. Yeah, that was a really, really good match. And, and I was watching the clip of that on – it seemed like the – like one of the things I noticed right off the back was one was that the two-piece, that your shirt yeah. was kind of loose, and then seemed like I watched it and – few times and then even they showed it on their replay where they 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 gave him that penalty is that he was kind of tugging on your your shirt a lot i mean he was and stuff but like i'm not gonna make that excuse yeah yeah. stuff Uh, but um yeah he was like i don't know it's kind of it's kind of weird too because two pieces like you want to grab the person shorter but you end up grabbing the thing yeah but like but it's um whatever then like like when i was a top bottom like he ended up pulling my pant my shorts kind of grabbing the area so I was like whoa there buddy and um I just let him up and stuff and um that was it (laughs) yeah no I mean regardless of the 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 outcome um you guys wrestled a great match and I mean you know um and I didn't even know this I'm pretty sure some of our our, or the people that are going to watch this didn't know this like one you 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 were injured leading up to this two have a a guy at your weight to wrestle and you know who whatever they don't have a guy to wrestle at your weight, whether they just don't have anybody or, or people or just don't want to wrestle you. And then three, you show up with a week's practice. Uh, you wrestle a weight, another weight class up, and then you mm-hmm. still go on and you go and wrestle this guy and it gets to overtime. And I think that itself just speaks a lot about you. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of like you said, like, you know, whoever, give me whoever, yeah. I got a week's notice or whatever, and let's yeah. just make it happen. I commend you on that. Uh, not a lot of people just are, are up for a challenge that quick. You're, like the, you're like the first person I tell, like, that I got hurt. But I don't want to make that excuse. Yeah, me, yeah. Me, but, like, it's just, like, damn, like, my knee was okay. And yeah. Stuff, and all that. I mean. All that. I different. All those yeah, little rolled through. Yeah. Not even just the knee, just more practice. If I had more practice and stuff, it would have been a whole different. But, I mean, he won, so I can't say nothing. He has yeah. a advantage of me, so. I feel you more mat time would obviously yeah. help you there. And um, but yeah, I just, I was just thinking that, um, so you lose to this guy, whatever, um, you know, you, you tip your hat off to this guy, but you're a guy that doesn't lose often. I, I mean, you've probably lost yeah. every now and then you lose. It, it's, it's, it's like, mm. it doesn't happen often. So when you do lose, and I like how you said, like, I, I don't care um, what the, you know, I don't care what the situation was. I'm not going to make any excuses. But when you do lose, how do you kind of bounce back from that? Um, what What is your thought process when you kind of maybe once in a t- while you take a loss and then 
you know, do you kind of dwell on it or do you, is this just on to the next one? Uh, I just, it's kind of on to the next one, but I usually like let myself like a week. I go to um, San Diego, you know, with one of my coaches um, train here and there, but not too much training because just to rest my body and yeah, hit the beach just hit the beach just to get the mind off stuff you know just recuperate and think about other things you know just besides wrestling because that could mentally break you and stuff like damn I gotta win this next tournament I gotta cut weight so I end up like I always end up doing like a week off hitting the beach kicking in with the homies and stuff just get doing other stuff besides wrestling and then then I get straight to next week back to business slowly just touching up on things I should have done and stuff. Yeah. Do you, do you kind of watch, once you do get back to it, do you kind of watch film or do you? Or oh, yeah. do you I watch a lot of film. I end up watching like at least, I say like two, like a whole kind of week of that whole film. Just like, damn, I should have done this, that, mm-hmm. but um, just like practicing stuff. So um, I feel like I'm prepared now and I'm fully back to hundred percent from injuries. So yeah, I'm ready to rock and roll for these up next coming tournaments. Hopefully that yeah. California lets us have. Yeah, that was uh, that was just kind of the thing I was gonna ask you too. That um, as of right now, doesn't look too good, but maybe um, they will have the season. But um, you know, you know, it is what it is. That's why I'm telling yeah. I've been telling a whole bunch of the guys that are in high school right now that maybe aren't gonna get to have a football season, a basketball season uh wrestling season lot for you and um i think maybe it may be cut in half uh may not be as um, long as you wanted may not be you know your your last ride that you expected but it is what it is and you got to make the best of it so once they they do have this season um like what are you just kind of anticipating you kind of just you know um obviously they might i don't know if they're gonna have the it's like the regulations, right? Like with the, yeah. NBA, the NBA, they did the bubble, which was, really, I think, really successful. The UFC is doing the uh, Fight Island, which I thought was dope. Yes. And, and I, I, you know, obviously it's not going to be a pro- like precautions to that level, but yeah. maybe like what, wrestle with a mask on? That's what I'm thinking. Like, you know. Yeah. I mean, they kind of want, like, I, I think we can't travel out of state or anywhere. I think we just had to stay local, like not go anywhere. And I think if we do, I think we would, end up not wrestling that season I feel like I haven't got too much word on it mm-hmm. but um if it doesn't happen then I mean I'm still going to be training and then when when they give me um the sign and I'm able to come to Arizona early then I'll end up taking off and stuff but if not then if we do have a season then I'm gonna end up staying and just working even more still um, training and stuff man that's I didn't know that there weren't well I now that you say it kind of makes sense that people aren't going to get to travel to these out-of-state tournaments Mm. um, that much. And a lot of people are kind of making this argument that this is going to affect a lot of people's recruiting process. Um, Mm. So say if you were like a freshman or sophomore and you really needed this year to kind of make yourself stick out, like what is like the big um, obstacle for you? Cause I know like, you know, you're already committed and stuff, but what about these young guys that they really needed this year to stick out or, Maybe I mean, time. right now they're doing like um the turn um the states that are free like Texas and all um uh, Ariz- Arizona and stuff yeah like that are open um they're hosting tournaments over there so those kids are like that want to get recruited or take serious or at least wrestle in college like hit those tournaments you know like hit those um get matches like try to beat people you know even though some guys might not go because of COVID. And stuff which is okay because you don't want to get sick and end up dying because it's a serious virus yeah so, um, but just do those if you have like if you feel healthy end up just go to those out-of-state tournaments and try to get your name on the radar and stuff so before COVID started um it's very normal what was your like daily practice schedule like and it started uh, in April right April 2020 so what were you doing around that time well, that was right after um state, so I was just chilling, you know. Um, yeah. I was gonna go on my on my last two visits, and um, but I was still working out, so um, like I would wake up like at four fifty in the morning, you know, do my daily routine in the morning, and um, what's it called? Um, head to one of my trainers in Fresno from um five thirty to six thirty, and go to my dad's in Selma, 
you know, shower up and head to school at eight o'clock and then practice um, either because sometimes um, they still let us practice after a season. And um, I would hit other uh, practices in Fresno and stuff with my other coaches. So I was still getting at least like three or two workouts a day. That's good. So you're still getting your work in during COVID. And then mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you kind of, your school starts, it's online. So what was that like you, what's, what was that like for you? Like for us, like, uh, like I'm in college right now, like it was really weird one, cause you had to kind of get used to navigating Zoom. Yeah and then getting onto these meetings and then it's like it was just weird because you're yeah. no one's talking one so it's really awkward and then yeah. get irritated so the teachers are kind of irritated and then some yeah. of them don't even know how zoom works so they're kind of like pissed off and stuff so it took a little bit it took a, a little while for me to kind of get um just in the groove and then I, um you know like my room was just kind of where I was at most of the days yeah um, what was that like for you because I know I can't imagine what it was like for some of these uh, high school teachers to kind of just be thrown out there and just learn how to navigate Zoom yeah. and conduct their classes? I was, um, I mean, I was still getting their training in, but um, like uh, I had to sit out for three months because of my injury. So I was just mostly just trying to build um, that injury back up. And um, and what's it called? The school was kind of easy, honestly. Like the teachers um, that I'm with, like we knew how to work it and like, it was just kind of easy, honestly. Then it kind of worked things out. Like, okay, like I could go to like I could leave early or whatever. Because sometimes classes would end early or whatever, mm -hmm. and I'll be able to go hit these practices without just waiting for. If you're in school, you gotta wait till three something to. So I mean, it kind of, kind of, it's kind of working out because you could do more stuff with time and not stay in one like place without um, being told to do stuff and, and whatever. Yeah, uh, I feel you, man. Well, now it's been about eight to eight to nine months, and and COVID is what it is. Um, it's mm -hmm. it's getting a little serious now, but um, I'm I'm hopeful, just like thousands of other people out there, that eventually California will reopen. Uh, people yeah. will start to kind of the cases will lower down, and and, and you guys, along with uh, thousands and and hundreds of thousands of other kids, get to have their their seasons. Mm -hmm. And um, because I feel like you have the right to to go yeah. out there, you know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. have the right to go out there and, and defend your title for the last time yeah. in your hey, high school career. I want to at least wear that sound with like one more time for real. I I can't. It's gonna be heartbreaking if I don't. Honestly. Oh man, I can't even imagine that for you. But um, besides wrestling, um, I know you committed to Arizona State, and mm -hmm. um. I'm assuming that academics is a very big process and yeah. um, in getting recruited. Um, wh what are your grades looking right now? Um, my grades always been like a 3.5 and higher, 3.5 and higher. So um, I mean, like if kids want to get recruited to big time or whatever, and you're big time at wrestling, you got to have grades and stuff. Cause um, that's what college, you don't want someone that's good. And then that can't do wrestling and end up can't, um, not wrestling end up doing um, bad in school they get kicked out because of the grades so my mom's always my mom always been hard on me like you gotta have good grades and stuff because I mean you want to have a good um, scholarship because that plays along with it too and stuff so I mean I always take school serious and stuff so but yeah. it comes easy to me because like I mean I don't know teachers just are good at explaining stuff <laughs> yeah um, I kind of I was gonna bring that up too about um, your mom and I read an uh, article it was in the Selma Enterprise and um, it, it said that how your your mom kind of um, she's proud of your accomplishments on the mat but off the mat she prioritizes your academics and, and she makes sure uh, like that you keep performing in the classroom as well and that, that's something that she she really um, holds to the highest level. And you yeah. kind of touched on it that your mom's always kind of just, you know, told you like, hey, you could be a good wrestler, but if you don't have the grades, you're not going anywhere. Yeah, facts. And that's for anyone. You could be good at anything. And if you don't have grades, your dreams can just crush in a moment because your grades. Yeah. And uh, what areas of, of studies, like what, what interests you? Um, uh, honestly, I'm just trying to, I don't know, cr criminology right now. I don't okay. know just something new and then if I don't like it then I'll switch it but like criminology and like all that 
detective work or whatever. I just feel that like. So law enforcement. So it, does that have to do with um, your dad, obviously, and then kind of having to kind of learning uh, law enforcement. Um, clearly, law enforcement. Uh, it's a big topic right now with uh, you know uh, prior events earlier this year with uh, police brutality and, and all that stuff. But that's just a small aspect of policing. Um, but um, personally, like I I have a AA in crim. Uh, I liked it a lot. I like learning about. And yeah. uh, it's it's kind of uh, a wide um, to big topic because it'll, it'll it'll cover um, legal aspects of stuff mm-hmm. that's going on in the courtroom. And then I'll mm-hmm. talk about like policing. Actually, like I had a, a professor who was like mm-hmm. a cop for like 26 years or something like mm-hmm. that at Fresno PD. So yeah. he had a lot of field work uh, experience and he would always kind of like he ran his clay. He, he ran his class like scenario based like, hey. Uh, this happened and then this happened like what would you do and I was like oh like I don't like it just made you think you know like do you really want to be this and then something cool I did was I went on a ride-along right so I went on I signed up to go on a ride-along at Fresno PD uh, <laughs> yeah bro uh, it's something I recommend it like if you really want to uh, you know do that uh, you should go on a ride-along and it'll really show you what it's like it's not like the movies it's not yeah. like the movies. <laughs> Bro, I went on a ride along and it was crazy. It was in South, <laughs> it was in Southeast Fresno. It was crazy. And my, the first call we went to was a home invasion call at like Ooh. 30 early. And I was like, bro, this is crazy. Sure enough, I spent about six to eight hours with this officer. <laughs> cool guy. And after I left, I was like, I don't want to do that, bro. Like, it, bro, it's a hard job. Um, yeah it's not easy. You see a lot of different stuff, stuff mm-hmm. that, um, like it could really mess you up mentally if you, if you're not yeah. have the mind for that. But I, I recommend you doing that. Uh, crim's a dope field. Um, I'm pretty sure you'll like it, but that's the thing about college too. When you enter college, um, you could pick a major and then I'd say like three and five people, maybe lower, but they'll switch their majors. Right. Cause they'll take yeah. these classes and they're like, I can't see myself doing this the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of a big pressure that gets put on uh, like us kids. Yeah. Like some kids really just don't know like what they want to yeah. do. And, and they well, like, I, I still kind of don't like know, but that's one of the things I want to try to like see if I could do or like and stuff. That's and one, that, one of them. And that's okay, bro. If you don't yeah. know, because you go to these classes and then you, you will, you'll like some classes and you don't like some classes. And then, you kind of pick and choose like, Hey, I could see myself doing this or, or that. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of make your, your case and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go all in on this. Yeah. Um, the reason why I wanted to ask you that is because um, wrestling is wrestling. Right. Yeah. And, and it will take you to wherever you want to get, like you want to get to. And, and clearly you're a very good and successful wrestler, but yeah. kind of just wanted to know what, what you were interested in. If uh, wrestling, if you kind of just, one yeah. day decide like yo this is it um uh, kind of just gonna focus on academics so i kind of just wanted to know what you were interested in yeah and sure. um then um now we talked about academics i kind of wanted to just, just wanted to ask you about your your long-term goals so i think earlier you 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 stated it but i just wanted to bring it up again you said your long-term goals was um winning a ncaa title yeah, a world title, and then to be an Olympian and represent the United States at the highest level of wrestling. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, that's correct. And and just I know like able then after that able to get a job and have a family and stuff. That's the goal and stuff. Yeah, um, bro. Uh, I just watched a uh, a little bit of like clips of the podcast with uh, have you? I don't know if you've seen it, but it was Jordan Burroughs. He was on. Um, yeah. He was on uh, Joe Rogan and and it was so dope because he's such a dope guy. And and I never really, I didn't really, I've seen him wrestle and stuff before. I've seen a few few videos and a couple of the, you know, homies will be like, yo, you know, Jordan Burroughs or uh, David Taylor and all these, you know, other greats, Kyle Dake or whatever. And Mm -hmm. I I, I don't know. I'm kind of like a, like a junkie. I'll watch like MMA wrestling, all these kind of shows just to kind of just know what's going on in the sport. But watching this podcast, I was like, man, like this guy is intelligent. Uh, he's a strong, strong dude. He, you know, he's a family man. And just to some of the stuff he was saying, and I really liked how um, he, he was talking about his experience at the 2012 Olympics and he yeah. talked about how, how that was just one of the, the dopest moments in his life, because he said that 
um, they told them, hey, like, you know, you can be like a, uh, you can be like a champ in the UFC, right? And then you lose, yeah. and then you're the former world champion. But once you're a gold medalist, right, or any any medalist, silver, yeah. bronze, but once you're a gold medalist, you'll always be a gold medalist. Yeah. And he said that's how they always kind of introduce him to where, wherever he goes. They always say, hey, um, Jordan Burroughs, Olympic gold medalist, is going to be yeah. talking at this press conference. I mean, before. he's put a lot into the sport, like, like just to get that us, like, wrestling elevated because, like, I mean, we want to make money, you know, like, like why quit something you're good at and try to look for a job you know like like we're yeah. trying to like that's what we're trying to do like make it big and stuff and other people are like flow like they just did like the 25k man um bracket and winner gets 25k and and then like if you lose you at least come out with 1k i think so oh. um now like like we barely started doing this year so i mean that's pretty dope i'll like a like we can make money now. Yeah. And, um, and then just seeing Jordan Burroughs on the Joe Rogan and like pro, um, podcast is like, it's pretty big because Joe Rogan is a pretty popular guy. Yeah. Just to get a wrestler on a podcast with him is pretty dope. For sure. I know. I, I, um, I think about my senior year when I graduated, I kind of started watching more podcasts just because, you know, you get tired of music, bro. You know, yeah. you heard the songs, all these albums. <laughs> So many times that they just kind of get um, played out. So I kind of started getting into podcasts and I like Joe Rogan's a lot just mm -hmm. because of the diversity on there and he'll bring on anyone. And, and I'm, I like that. Um, and I kind of wanted to, to implement that too. Yeah. I've, I've wanted to do this for a while and mm -hmm. I was just thinking, man, like if I can just start it. Right. So I started and then yeah. there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that a lot of people don't get to see. And yeah. um, he's like, he's it, bro. He's the pinnacle of, of podcasting. And, and I, li I like watching this episode a lot. But like you said, like um, Jordan, Jordan Burroughs is, is the guy, you know, he's putting on for wrestling. He's he's made it um, apparent that, you know, if we're good at this, why should we have to stop? And I think he mentioned that um, that someone maybe was in the works there. They want to have a professional wrestling league, like a league, like a legit one. Not they like used to. I heard that they used to like have matches like um like that but that was like back then i think that's yeah. i forgot to tell me like it was a couple like super matches like yeah dc wrestled in it and stuff like he was saying you know, jordan burroughs was saying that's what i got it from like there was yeah. one time but then like kind of died down i think do you think that in the future that someone will kind of revive it and bring it back and is that something that you would like to see I feel like within like the next at least five or within like 10 years, it's going to be like people making money in wrestling. Not just that, but off of sponsors like Jordan Bros, he's sponsored off of ASICS and mm -hmm. stuff, like which is a really good running company and stuff. And he has his own shoe. So like that's how would we would make our money too is off sponsors and at least getting good sponsors and stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting concept and to kind of making money off of your name. And it's, especially at the professional level, you know, if you're good enough, you'll get that sponsor, but it, it's a little bit more harder at the collegiate level, right? Because, you know, you can't get paid and stuff. But um, yeah. even that, you know, it's about to change in the next few years, how um, California just, they're supposed to sign this bill. Um, I don't know if it was finalized or not, but they're supposed to sign this bill where, college athletes can make money off of the off of their name so you know if they I want to uh just think it was a july july took place in um in july in 2021 it takes place i think it's in full effect yeah i think but only in california i don't know if the date is wrong but i yeah. know california is close to on sign like but other states still need to do that too but i think it's it's going to be interesting because in terms of recruiting Right. So everyone's going to want to, if they're good enough, they're going to want to come to Cali. Yeah. So I think to, in order to like combat that other schools or other States are going to have to end up being like, yo, we have to do this too, or we're going to lose all these athletes to California. Yeah. And it's just, gonna, right. it's just going to be unfair. So I think it's just a matter of time for the NCAA and all these States to just come to an agreement. Yeah. And like, Hey, I feel like you should get paid because like, not even like you, like you're putting on for like your school and stuff and showing how hard you work. And then you don't like they don't know what your body goes through to like win those matches or whatever. Like I feel like you should be getting paid, like not just like not get paid, you know. 
Yeah, no, that's, that's for sure. And I even, um, in college, I had a communications class and I had a debate on um, why I think that college athletes should get paid. And I did a lot of research in that time. And it was just interesting to me that like, how can the NCAA just make billions of dollars every year? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then, then there, there's the whole um, argument about how certain sports bring in more revenue, right? Like football and yeah. basketball bringing the most money. Um, basketball, just because of March Madness, you know how crazy it gets yeah. just to pick the winner uh, on that bracket. And then the same thing for football. Um, it's just big programs, bro. These, these programs bring in, in millions in, in dollars. And then they have these yeah. billion dollar deals with these, these TV networks and um then there were there's this you know it's this argument that how are how how do you compare say like like volleyball to football or like say like even wrestling like you know like maybe wrestling doesn't bring in a lot of yeah but then how how do they get paid the same as these other you know football players or basketball players Mm -hmm. there's a lot to figure out um there's a lot of logistics but i think over time with, with, with proper planning that it'll eventually come into light and these athletes that are, you know, putting in work, blood, sweat, tears are, are I think they'll eventually. Um, I feel like it would make them like not even work hard, which they should be working hard, but like, I feel like it would take it to like, you would see more people like, like show like a lot of crazy skills that they like have. Trying, you know, actually trying. Yeah. yeah. Cause like you said earlier, like, um, like your parents are putting in money from a young age. So it's almost like an investment, right? Yeah. So you're, they're, they're investing in you and, and they're not, they're probably not expecting you, right? Like they're probably just like, Hey, this is my kid. He really likes to do this. But, the, and like, you know, if he does good and if, if this is what, like, if this is the right, you know, path or the destiny or whatever you, or um, you'll eventually, you know, make it to wherever you deserve to be. Mm-hmm. And I think that, those parents that do that, uh, it, it's just dope because they, you know, they believe in their kid, you know, kind of like your parents, they just believe in you and they pushed you. And then you go to these extra practices, these extra coaches, the injury, mm-hmm. the, you know, the sweat, the, the your yeah. like, hard practices, it, it's almost endless, but, um, you know, once you get through it and then that offer finally comes through, uh, it's all worth it. Yeah, for real. I mean, both my parents don't have to stress on anything or whatever just because yeah. if you work hard at anything i mean you'll make your parents happy no matter what hopefully. are your are your parents your uh your biggest role models yeah i mean yeah well, of course all like yeah i mean just because what they did sacrifice i mean i want to be able to you know if i have kids to teach them the way my parents taught me and stuff for so, sure yeah. i feel you man um as I get older, I, I, I kind of start to value and cherish um, that family time a little bit more. Um, yeah. Just, I don't know, just something about it. You know, you grow up a little bit more and, and yeah, and, and all that you go through that little phase where you're kind of throwing fits and, you know, you know, you don't want to be around your parents or whatever, but as you get older, you, you for sure start getting a little closer to them. So um, I think that's something that you're going to value a lot while you go away for college, for sure. Yeah. I am, honestly, <laughs> it's going to be crazy, but I mean, I got to do what I got to do. Yeah. And then um, uh, what are, who are some other, your role models, maybe some coaches, some teammates, or, or is there just too many to name? Cause I mean, I would say like my coaches, my coaches, um, just people that just help me, honestly, people that help me are just all my role models. And um, I kind of like Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, and like, all those kind of guys just because way the way how they talked and brought the game and stuff like the fight and um, yeah. intensity I mean it's pretty cool and stuff but anyways that helped me I mean they're a big role model, role model to me and stuff yeah um every once in a while I'll see you just post a Muhammad Ali like quote or something and I think it's yeah. really cool because he you know he was like he's the OG he started it kind of in yeah. where he was kind of controversial at that point just because of segregation and stuff. And at the same time, um, the war was going on and he was like, I'm not yeah. going to fight and stuff. Right. And then, like <laughs> and, on top, and on top of that, he, he had, it. he was, he was in the ring, you know, messing dudes up yeah. and he had this swag to him. And I thought it, it was just dope um, that he, he's a dope guy. And, and especially like now, I think like, even with like Mike Tyson, he made a comeback. Right. And I was tripping. I was like, mm-hmm. what? Like this dude is 53 and he's going to fight. But yeah. And it was crazy, right? And 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 then we I, we watched him perform, and I was like, man, this guy just looks. Okay, you gotta kill that guy out there. 
He's a monster, bro. And I would um, get ring with that guy. I'm not. I don't know if you know, but he has a podcast too. It's really cool. Um, oh, I watched. I just watched recently the Ryan Garcia one, and okay. it was pretty dope. Yeah. <laughs> um. So all that, I feel you. Uh, who do you have in that fight with Ryan and Tank? Oh, Tank, Tank all day. Knock tank out. all day. Yeah, Tank, Tank and kill him. And then, um, what about Connor and and, and Poirier? Oh, Connor, come on. Connor, <laughs> he's going to kick him in the head and he's going to go night night. Okay. No, yeah. I, um, everyone's kind of, you know, excited for his comeback. It's been a while. But um, what are some, who are like some wrestlers in, in, in MMA, UFC that you kind of look like, you know, look up to maybe some techniques you watch in their fights, maybe some of their training? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say um, Yanni Diakamas from Cornell. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, He's slick and stuff and just does crazy stuff that I bet you he doesn't, like, he probably doesn't even know what he does when he's wrestling. But, I mean, it's it's interesting, and I try to do that stuff. And um, I would say, like, Jordan Burroughs, some, like, Russians and stuff. Um, uh, like, uh, then, like, some of my teammates that I'm going to be with at Arizona, like, Ja'Cory um, and um, – Jesse Vasquez and like Brandon Courtney and like other people that are good that I see that I could use instead of just their style. And I mean, they're pretty, that's pretty cool. And you said uh, Jesse Vasquez, that's the last four timer, right? Yeah, that's the last four timer. So it's kind of like a coincidence. Yeah. I mean, me and him grew up for, I mean, since, I mean, we didn't grow up, but like we've been on national teams for California and stuff. So we always knew each other and stuff. So for us to go to the same school, it's going to be like cool because I mean, we can actually go to school now with each other. Yeah, definitely. And then um, this is kind of like a common trend. A lot of wrestlers do. So, right. So they have uh, great high school careers, maybe even collegiate careers, and then mm-hmm. they kind of transition over to MMA. So is that something that you, you, you know, you might, think about in the future or is that is that just kind of not your thing you're, you're not trying to get the face and stuff maybe boxing honestly maybe boxing I don't know boxing just seems I feel like a lot more safer and I know you make a lot of money in that too mm-hmm. so I think like I'll probably try out boxing but I don't know who knows who knows yeah no I feel you it's uh it's I guess you could say it's a little less lethal because you're probably you know you don't have to expect kicks and stuff you kind of just yeah rely on your hands and your head movement and stuff like that but yeah um like the biggest name I could think of and, and I didn't even really know of this guy right and I and I was like who is this guy and then I, I a couple of the homies they're you know wrestling wrestling guys and they've been in the wrestling community and they're like yeah this guy was legit and then he transitioned over to, uh, to MMA and this guy's name is Aaron Pico and I had no clue who this guy was right? <laughs> yeah and he and I I did not know how dominant he was as a wrestler in high school. Oh yeah. Well, he only, he only did like one year. Like the coach that he's been coached by, um, that's where I'm staying at with him and stuff. So um, that's crazy. Yeah. So uh, um, yeah, he's so like he's good. He's good. Yeah, that's that's see, like that's crazy. I just kind of brought him up, and you're somehow connected to something, yeah. and it's just a coincidence. But yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy bro the the wrestling community is, is so it's it's expanding and, and a, like it feels f- it feels like everyone just kind of knows each other or, or knows of like somebody and yeah. especially if you know you have a little bit of like you know uh fame and you know you're a decent wrestler if your yeah. name out there and i feel mm-hmm. like um in the past year some of these platforms have done like a good job um, to promote wrestling and, and get live streams out there, kind of like Flow National or the Flow, yeah. Flow Wrestling and stuff. Like, yeah. um, I know a lot of people watch the wrestling off that. So, like, what do you think about like these platforms that are kind of, um, you know, they provide these services that you can stream and, and support maybe whoever and or maybe even learn from these matches that are going on at anywhere in the world? I mean, like, it's pretty good because I mean, for those people to like, put time and like as their career to what like put wrestling on the map or so they can make money um and it gives us like colleges to look at us too honestly like it helps a lot because they're the ones that we're recording and then putting on their website so colleges could see and stuff so 
like, I mean, it's a, I mean, you win both ways kind of. So, I mean, it's great because like, I feel like if there wasn't no platform, I feel like, I mean, I, I would get recruited, but like, like not that much people would know me, you know, like I wouldn't like be recognized as much, but since, I mean, they've been posting and stuff, me and I, I've been getting recognized and stuff, just like by the wrestling community at tournaments and stuff, people, kids want to take pictures and everything. How does that feel when, when someone younger, like young comes up to you and they're like, Hey, you know, can I get a picture or autograph? Like, what, what does that feel like? Cause I've never had that feeling, you know, like I'm <laughs> well, not a stud athlete or anything. It's like the coolest moment. Like just to see it's like some kid look up to you, like as like inspiration It's like, damn, like I must be doing something right. Like it's yeah. so cool. Like just to put a kid smile, like that could have made his whole day, you know, like he could have been having a bad day and you just do something that could, you know, he could remember for his whole life. I got an autograph from someone I like or that That's made me do the wrestling and stuff. So, I mean, it, it drives me to train hard be, to become a better person and stuff and just um, be good overall, honestly. Yeah, definitely. I, I kind of feel like it's a really big responsibility nowadays, too, because now you're – it's not only, like, who you are huh. uh, on the mat and stuff. It's, it's social media, right? So now you have to be careful of what you're posting – maybe you know something you don't want to be offensive yeah. not something that's like you know you don't want to just kind of you know be in the mix and 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 some people just be like oh this guy you know he he, yeah. he did something that's really messed up or or hey you know he he's partying and stuff so like talk about the responsibility that like a like an athlete like of your stature needs to be uh, how responsible do you need need to be i mean like you need to be like i mean like hundred percent. I mean, like, you don't want to like act brand new, you know, but you kind of want to be like yourself. So, um, like I always be myself all the time. I try to be, you know, um, like, I mean, if I post something, I mean, like people shouldn't get me be mad. Like that's me, you know, like you can't control my life, you know? Yeah. But, um, you do watch what you post and stuff if you're an athlete. Cause I mean, like you could get in trouble and then you may not get recruited and stuff, but um, you just got to be yourself, honestly. Um, and just make sure you're just around good people. But like, I mean, I would always just kind of just kick it with the homies. That's it. And just chill and just try to stay out of trouble. And that's it. Just try to, try to stay out of trouble and just keep winning. But yeah, um, yeah. bro, we had a, a dope conversation. Um, I, I, I hope, you know, I'm hopeful that you get to wrestle your senior year and, and, and cap it off uh, just like everybody else um, in Selma and, and all your fans that are rooting for you. Uh, real quick, before I end it, uh, you want to just drop your socials. Uh, that way, um, if anyone wants to follow you on, on Twitter or, or Insta. All right, so I don't remember my Twitter, but my Instagram is uh, Richard.Figueroa, F-I-G-U-E-R-O-A 21. Then Twitter would be, let's see. Stunner Man Rich. Stunner Man Rich. You guys heard it, ladies and gentlemen. But thank you, brother. Thank you for coming on and, and, and spending yeah. wisdom, uh, telling us about your career, your, your life. And, and hopefully someone out there, some young kid, could take away from your experience and, and make it their own. Yeah. I mean, it's been – I mean, it was great talking to you. I mean, giving these people um, just some stuff about me and my life and what Salma is about and stuff. And I'm honored to share that on this yeah, podcast. Yeah, for sure, bro. I'll have you on in the future. I'm still growing and stuff, but I definitely wanted you to have you on for sure, just because you're you're one of these guys that's really out there just doing it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, from South for Selma and then the Valley, and mm -hmm. and you're you know you're you're doing your thing, bro. And I love that. I'm happy for you, and I'm proud of you. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Have a good night. You too. See ya. Later, bro. See ya. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was episode three with Richard Figueroa this second. Um, it was a great conversation. He talked about his life. Um, he talked about wrestling, his wrestling career. Uh, he talked about his, um, his ups and downs in his career, how he handles the pressure, how he keeps his mentals right, and how he's maximized his career from coming up uh, as a small-time wrestler and now elevating his game and getting that D1 degree. And he's going to be wrestling at Arizona State University next year. And um, 
currently his season's on hold because he's not going to be able to wrestle uh, due to COVID. And um, but if he does, um, best believe that he's going to be winning that four state title. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in and more episodes coming soon. Thank you.